Every year, around May the 5th, Chinese people welcome in the first summer solar term, the beginning of summer. Traditions include eating a meal with freshly harvested rice, checking your weight and giving each other black rice with blessings for another year. China is the third largest country in the world. Its regional climate conditions are hugely diverse. In early May, at the beginning of summer, the north seems to be still, hovering at the end of spring. But the south has completely entered the summer. Guangxi is located in the south of China. It's one of the most abundant areas for rainfall in China. This is the perfect place for growing rice. I'm here in Bama County, Guanxi, to witness the annual rice planting festival. This is a very important ceremony held on the day that marks the beginning of summer. I'm going to visit Mr. Huang Wenhui, who will be the host for this rice planting festival. The Yao people in Bama have been farming for generations. And apart from the annual spring festival, the rice planting festival at the beginning of summer is the most important festival. Compared with the Western preference for wheat, the Chinese are known for their love of rice, especially the Southern Chinese. This preference is related to the history of rice in China, which of course is where rice originated from. As early as 7,000 years ago, at the dawn of human civilization, the Chinese discovered the miracle of rice. Over the centuries, as rice became the most popular staple food in China, the problem of feeding the most populous nation on earth was resolved. The 24 solar terms, invented more than 2,000 years ago, help farmers successfully define the farming year, and it still works today. At the Qingming solar term about a month ago, Bama villages had planted their rice into the dry land, and now the seedlings have grown to about eight centimeters tall. At the beginning of summer, the rice crop is at its most vigorous growth stage, transplanting the rice seedlings from the dry fields to the paddy fields at the beginning of summer is an essential step to ensure a good harvest. After the ceremony and rituals, the next step is plowing the rice fields with a buffalo. Okay. <笑>你到七十三還可以接著幹活了 you know, there's always something very romantic about rice paddies, especially when you see them from above and you've got this amazing reflection. And here in Guangxi, you're surrounded by these very dramatic mountains. And for me, this is the first time I've actually got to experience what rice really is. Rice for me is just something that comes at the end of the meal in China. 
But these guys have been farming this way for hundreds of years, and it's absolutely fascinating. Look, 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 look. With the worldwide population explosion and the expansion of cities and with increasing urbanization, the deep relationship between human beings and nature, the very source of our food, is being weakened. Not everyone has the chance to be like me here, to experience how to cultivate rice in paddy fields, how to actually produce food. The Chinese have always paid great attention to the beginning of summer, since ancient times. More seedlings transplanted in the summer means more grain stocked up in the storehouses for winter. This is a well-known common saying among Chinese farmers. Yeah. Yangle 那这个距离多远呢？距离有这么多？这么多啊，这样那么长，那一长过去，好的，对，啊，这个米其实最后是在哪儿长出来？哦，就是从这这这里都要出来了，从这里都出来了啊。Rice isn't only grown in the south of China; it's also grown up in the northeast. But in the northeast, you've got very large, flat areas where they use big machines to. Produce huge amounts of rice. Now, down here in the south, and it's two seasons. Up in the north, they just do it once in the summer, but here they do it twice, and this is the first one. And here in the mountains, there's much less land to work with, and also you can't use big machines. So, really, the farming techniques here haven't changed over hundreds of years because, as Huang Lasha was explaining to me, no matter how good the machine is, it's not going to work as you go up these mountains. So they carry on using cows and they carry on using the same equipment and the horses that they've used for hundreds of years. But this is a very idyllic lifestyle. I mean, I'm covered in mud and I've been bent over in the fields planting rice. But I have to say, I, I couldn't be happier. With plentiful rain and sunlight. Bama is lush with plant life, especially at the beginning of summer. Even the most inconspicuous of plants is regarded as a treasure by the locals, and each has its own special use. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> In the mountains outside the Bama village, there are wild fruits that grow, and the beginning of summer is the season when they come to maturity. The local people gather these fruits every year and brew them into a special wine. And Mr. Huang Wenhui says that this wine can give you a very long life. Hey, this Lucktum. 
The Chinese raspberry is a very vigorous plant. No matter what the climate or whether the land is fertile or barren, green or dry, this fruit can grow in large quantities. <laughs> <laughs> the fruits are extremely delicate and difficult to preserve. The secret of preservation is that it must be done on the same day the fruits are collected because they deteriorate so quickly. Can Every year at the beginning of summer, the new raspberry wine is sealed until the next summer, when it is opened and enjoyed at the longevity banquet in Burma. The Barma Longevity Banquet is a special celebration of the beginning of summer. After the rice planting, all the Barma villages will make their share of a hearty meal together to celebrate and to wish the elderly good health and longevity. This is something I've never seen before. Usually when you have dumplings in China, the outside is, is a bread, it's wheat or it's corn. But this is tofu. So on the outside of here is all tofu. On the inside is pork and coriander. You make them into these beautiful little cakes and then we slap them down here. What happens next is they're deep fried. That sounds delicious. Look at that. Zumiya. The food is ready. The annual rice ceremony begins. They've been farming rice for generations in Burma. The staple food here is, of course, rice. But first, it must be blessed in a rice blessing ceremony. Well, now that that ceremony is over, I have to say that I was very unaware of exactly what was happening. I certainly didn't understand what the Taoist priest was saying. But these ceremonies, from what I can understand, mean that once I've had my sticky rice blessed, that it will bring good harvest and longevity. I'm going to live for a very long time. After the rice ceremony, the blessed rice will be specially dyed into five colors, turning it into a more ceremonial food for the banquet. 
five colored rice. The rice is dyed with natural edible vegetable juices. This wooden tool they use to crush the leaves and extract the juice is the same one that was invented during the Han Dynasty over 2,000 years ago. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. I can remember my mother telling me you should eat a variety of colors and foods and it will keep you healthy. Now these five healthy colors are all here. They remind me of the colors of the Olympic rings. I think maybe the secrets of the Burma people's health and longevity is symbolized by these five colors from nature. The five colored rice is cooked and the longevity banquet begins. The celebration of the beginning of summer is coming to a close. This is a festival which celebrates good health, long life, and most especially, rice itself. The Chinese have a very deep connection with rice. After all, they discovered it, and they invented ways to cultivate it. Rice is essentially the fuel of China. Planting, farming, and harvesting in harmony with nature. Seasons and cycles, contraction and growth, new life born from old. The 24 solar terms are the crystallization of this ancient wisdom.